the Lord can be trusted. Praise the Lord and pray in his name. Tell everyone what he has done. Sing praises to the Lord. Tell about his miracles. Celebrate and worship his holy name with all your heart. Trust the Lord and his mighty power. Remember his miracles and all his wonders and his fair decisions. You belong to the family of Abraham, his servant. You are his chosen ones, the descendants of Jacob. The Lord is our God bringing justice everywhere on earth. He will never forget his agreement or his promises, not in thousands of years. God made an eternal promise to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when he said, I'll give you the land of Canaan. Shout praises to the Lord! Exodus chapter 16 And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, O oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? Also Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses spoke to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. What life means to Paul? If I live, it will be for Christ, and if I die, I will gain even more. I don't know what to choose. I could keep on living and doing something useful. It's a hard choice to make. I want to die and be with Christ because that would be much better. But I know that all of you still need me. That's why I am sure I will stay on to help you grow and be happy in your faith. Then when I visit you again, you will have good reason to take great pride in Christ Jesus because of me. Above all else... You must live in a way that brings honour to the good news about Christ. Then, whether I visit you or not, I will hear that all of you think alike. I will know that you are working together and that you are struggling side by side to get others to believe the good news. Be brave when you face your enemies. Your courage will show them that they are going to be destroyed, and it will show you that you will be saved. God will make all this happen, and he has blessed you. Not only do you have faith in Christ, but you suffer for him. You saw me suffer, and you still hear about my troubles. Now you must suffer the same way.
Workers in a Vineyard As Jesus was telling what the kingdom of heaven would be like, he said, Early one morning a man went out to hire some workers for his vineyard. After he agreed to pay them the usual amount for a day's work, he sent them off to his vineyard. About nine that morning the man saw some other people standing in the market with nothing to do. He said he would pay them what was fair if they would work in his vineyard. So they went. At midday, and again about three in the afternoon, he returned to the market, and each time he made the same agreement with others who were lazing around with nothing to do. Finally, about five in the afternoon, the man went back and found some others standing there. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. Then he told them to go and work in his vineyard. That evening, the owner of the vineyard told the man in charge of the workers to call them in and give them their money. He also told the man to begin with the ones who were hired last. When the workers arrived, the ones who had been hired at five in the afternoon were given a full day's pay. The workers who had been hired first thought that they would be given more than the others, but when they were given the same... They began complaining to the owner of the vineyard. They said, the ones who were hired last worked for only an hour, but you paid them the same that you did us, and we worked in the hot sun all day long. The owner answered one of them, friend, I didn't cheat you. I paid you exactly what we agreed on. Take your money now and go. What business is it of yours if I want to pay them the same that I paid you? Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Why should you be jealous if I want to be generous? 
Jesus then said, So it is. Everyone who is now first will be last, and everyone who is last will be first. We uh, now read the Epistle reading uh, from Philippians uh, 1, 21 through 30. The Philippians reading, uh, in this reading Paul feels he would gain his own death because he would be in the presence of Christ and that God would use his death to further his kingdom. But if he lives, he will be able to continue preaching. But he had confidence in his thoughts. So Philippians, we read, For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for it is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. I have to find the rest of it. Sorry, it's on the back. To continue, we're starting again in 27. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am present to hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For then this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. And for Matthew, this reading gives us a lesson Jesus teaches us as a parable of the workers in the vineyard. This is Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. So when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. These are God's words. The subject for today that I wanted to share with you is on images. When we think of images, we should think of the ways we are seen by others around us. Do you remember me 
mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Anyone remembering Snow White will remember where the evil queen in the story was obsessed and she wanted to know who was the most beautiful person in the world. So she would always ask the magic mirror, who is the fairest of them all? It's been a lot of years since that time and I don't really remember what the evil queen even looked like. But I do think I can remember that the magic mirror told her that she was the fairest of them all. Until, of course, Snow White came into the picture. And then I think you probably remember the rest of the story. In other things, do you remember, and this is a long time ago for me, going to a carnival had a fun house and had a, a hall of mirrors. They scared me, except for the one that made me look thin. <laughs> they would always make people laugh. Another thing that was interesting were the disco balls. Uh, some of them were at skating rinks. I haven't been on a pair of roller skates for I don't know how many years. But some of them were there at the skating rinks, and I've seen some uh, different uh, wedding receptions and dances. They were shiny and glittery as they turned, catching and reflecting pretty bits of light all over the room. It is said that a disco, disco ball is actually a very good analogy or word picture of the body of Christ as it reflects his light. The ball has hundreds of tiny mirrors connected together and looking at the scripture pictures of the body of Christ in 2 Corinthians 3 uh, verse 18, it tells us, but we Christians are like mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And another aspect of the disco ball, it continues as the rest of the scripture reads, and as the Spirit of God works within us, we become more and more like Him. God enables us to become more like Him by His own work in us as we reflect a little bit of Him. Like one small piece of disco ball, we can reflect His light to shine all over and all around, and that is all around us, and be a blessing and an inspiration to those we meet. Now mirrors could tell the truth, or mirrors could lie to us. So what do mirrors tell us? There are mirrors that are made of glass. Mirrors could be people, and sometimes we allow those people to make us wonder of our own self-worth. Do we have money, good job, or good education? Or maybe we're not beautiful. Maybe we don't dress right. Or maybe our skin is a different color. Because of sin, we have become blind to the beauty of the image of God in us. And we have failed to see the beauty of the image of God in others. The true mirror of Jesus Christ, he is the true mirror. He mirrors to us what we should become. Some time ago in Sunday school class, we were studying the parables from the back side. And it touched on the subject of why doesn't God like religious people. For some reason or other, I missed that study, but I read it. Make sure Chuck knows that. The parable was about the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee was a highly respected religious leader in the community. He was admired, and he adhered to the law, and his theory was beyond question. His example of faithfulness to God was commendable, and he wanted to show others what it meant to be a God-fearing man. He wanted to be the best. On the other hand, the tax collector was hated. He didn't go to the temple because he worked on Sunday and he always had his hands in our pockets. The Pharisee would tell you how good he was compared to other people, and the tax collector, who stood at a distance, would not even look up to heaven as, as he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, Jesus surprised the people by saying that this man, the tax collector, not the Pharisee, went home justified before God. But why? 
Because God doesn't look at people the same way we do. God doesn't judge according to our human standards, but looks at the heart. The difference between the Pharisee and the tax collector was that the Pharisee told God how good he was in comparison to others, and the tax collector admitted to God how bad he was in comparison to God. One looked at himself in the mirror, and the other looked at God. Now, mirrors can only reflect what is in front of them. They can't choose. We can choose, and what we can choose is to reflect God's glory. If we take away the mirror, we can look into the face of Jesus, what, that we behold the brightness of the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. His, then his light is reflected to the world. Max Otato wrote, Beholding leads to becoming, becoming leads to reflecting. When we behold, or grasp, or understand the glory of the Lord, the same glory is created in us. We then progress and grow from one stage of glory to a higher stage. Beholding is in a glass is looking into a mirror or discerning by reflected light. Mirrors were made of highly polished metal. The face would be clearly seen by strong reflected light. Our form is changed into the same image which we behold there. And this is the image of God. Here we hope to be mirrors in the hands of God, the reflection of the light of God. For one thing, as reflector of God's glory, we don't have to be the greatest. We are already children of the King. We have nothing to boast about as God has made us who we are. We don't have to trust in our own righteousness as God has already made us righteous by the blood of Jesus. We don't have to try to look good. Our goodness is a result of what Jesus has done for us and in us. We don't have to hold up a mirror. We can be a mirror that reflects God's glory. Have you seen pictures of people with their animals and read the captions of how owners and their dogs look alike? I've always that really a funny coincidence and maybe that's why I don't own an animal. But realistically, not thinking of our looks, do you realize that we are mirrors of whatsoever and whosoever we are in the presence of? The more that you are in the presence of someone, the more you could mirror them. We need to be careful of the people that we need to keep company with. As the Bible tells us not to be deceived as evil communications corrupt good manners. We need to associate with Jesus through his word, prayer, and worship if we are to be transformed into his image and he is seen in us. He should be our constant companion. If there is a veil over your mirror, you cannot reflect anything. If there is that veil, then you're caring more for yourself and not having a concern of the consequences, and that is judgment day. If there is any place that, where love is shown, it is where people can still look each other and yourself in the eye after they have seen what they look like when they get out of bed, and after they know what they had to do to make themselves presentable to others. The places where love is shown are not physical, but relational spaces. Relational spaces are places that provide a mirror for your soul. And in these places, you see yourself through the eyes of others. A family where love is shown, it will, it will provide a head start in developing a healthy sense of our value, our worth, and our self-esteem. Many family mirrors are broken with the separation of husbands and wives, loss of jobs, financial concerns that may lead to bankruptcy, and people feeling that they have no way to turn. Other mirrors of our souls are, are, are our relationships with friends and with our church family, where love should be shown. We all fall short of showing love the way we should. 
So where do we go to get a good look at our souls? And the answer, of course, is the Bible. Reading its pages opens a heart and our inquiring minds. The Holy Spirit holds up a mirror to our souls. We can see the reflections of ourselves in the stories of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Mary and Martha, Peter and John, Paul and Timothy. What were we created to be? What have we become? What vision will you get of what you will be? Reading the Bible is really more important than combing your hair in the morning. The Holy Spirit is like the light between our physical eyes and physical mirrors. When there is no light, we cannot see our reflection in the mirror. When the light shines brightly, we can see clearly. The Holy Spirit gives light to the eyes of our souls. By the light of the Holy Spirit, we can see how sin has distorted the image of God that created, that created in us. By the light of the Holy Spirit, we can see the wounds and scars that are sin inflicted on Christ. And by the light of the Holy Spirit, we can see the forgiveness that Christ offers to us and the love that can transform us. And also by the light of the Holy Spirit, we can see that the judgment seat of Christ is also a mercy seat. What's the once the eyes of our soul have been opened, we either choose to live in the light or do we prefer the darkness and turn away from it? Those who choose to live in the light are called to become mirrors of Christ. They live with a constant awareness of the love that has appeared in Christ. They consciously or conscientiously try to give a true reflection of the light of the love that stands before them. An interesting story that I, I had read uh, was about a high school freshman that was walking home from school uh, and he saw a kid from his class that was carrying all his books. He must really be a nerd, he thought. Then he saw a bunch of kids knocking this kid's books out of his arms and tripping him. Well, he went over to him and helped him with his glasses that got knocked off his face and helped pick up his books. As he commented that, those guys are jerks and need to get a life. The kid smiled, a, a smile that showed real gratitude and said, hey, thanks. They found out that they lived near each other, but the kid had gone to a private school for a while, so that's why they hadn't known each other for very long. And a freshman boy most likely wouldn't have hung out with a private school kid anyway. But he invited the kid to play some football with him and his friends, and they hung out all weekend. They became best friends in the next four years, and even later, going to different colleges didn't change that. So the kid turned out to become very popular, and also the valedictorian of his class. But his new friends still liked to tease him about being a nerd. His speech on graduation day reflected on thanking those who helped you through the tough years, your parents, your teachers, your siblings, maybe a coach, but mostly your friends. What shocked everyone was that on that day when he met his best friend, he had planned to kill himself. And that is why he had all his books with him that day, because he had cleared out his locker, because he didn't want his mom to have to do that later. Now that's just an abbreviated story from the original, but what I saw in this story was that God puts us all in each other's lives to impact one another in the same way. Look for God in others. See if you see the reflection of Jesus in another's eyes. I think that when this kid looked up into the eyes of the high school freshman, he saw something reflected there, and he responded with a smile of gratitude and a, hey, thanks. And his life was saved. So clean off your mirror. Look to see if Jesus is reflected in it. God bless you. Amen. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the gift of today. 
as we come together this morning to share this special time with each other, we praise and thank you for the unconditional love you have for all of us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will strengthen and sustain us as we pray for your continued blessings upon each one. We pray for your guidance as we continue to face the changes in our world and in our lives. We thank you for the love of family and friends for the gift of life. As we look forward to welcoming, welcoming a new pastor for our congregation, we look back and thank you for the previous pastors that have served us over the years. We were blessed by their generosity, their understanding, their wisdom, and their compassion. Because of their patience, their teaching, and their love, we have been blessed. We pray for your guidance as we continue to face the uncertain future in this world, holding on to the faith that you, have, you will always be with us with an everlasting love. We pray that we can have an understanding of the needs of others and an understanding of how we can better serve you by being there for those in need. As we leave summer behind us and look forward to the fall season, let us also look forward to the love you have for us and help us to share that love with those around us. Help us to be bold enough to express to others how your love has changed us and can change them. As the leaves change color and the days become cooler, so can we change by trusting in you for your love never ends for each of us. This is a promise that you have made to us. Help us to keep the trust in the plan that you have for our lives. We are thankful that you hear our heart's desires as we thank you for hearing the prayers that are expressed either verbally or silently today by each one. We pray for new opportunities knowing that ever, every ending brings a new beginning. We pray for the students and teachers that they have begun a new time of study. Give them the gift of patience and insight, clearing all our minds from distraction and lead us on your path. Most of all, Father, we pray that you fill us with the hope and remind us of your unchanging love and promise. Join me in our prayer that, our, that Jesus was followed many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of power, and the glory of Friends, may we go forth today fully assured that life lived according to the high priorities of faith matters forever. Guided by the faithful one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live this week in confidence. Live this week in power. Live this week in the presence of our triune God. And may the joy of our Lord be with you. Amen.